Now, I've thought about making this video for a long time, but it took a while for me to get my thoughts down and to articulate them the right way. Because it's not necessarily just about us, but a large part of the audio software industry. Why iLock? Why this little USB stick connected to my computer just so that I can sit down and work? Well, to answer that, first, I have to explain what iLock is. It's a form of DRM, which stands for Digital Rights Management. And to keep a long story short, it was made to prevent piracy. Now, I know a lot of good-hearted people that purchase all of their software, but get upset the way that iLock's integrated into their workflow. To be honest, I was one of these people, but iLock has made some strides to make it easier on the consumer as well as protect the software developers. This is also sort of interesting because I'll be speaking from the side of a software company and I don't think that video has ever been made. If so, it doesn't ring a bell, but I know a bell that you can ring. Hit that notification bell, leave a like and subscribe if you have Miami, haven't. your transition game really is crazy. Thanks, imaginary me. By the end of this video, I will explain the main issues that people think they have with iLock and my solutions to their problems. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST, and I want you to know I'm a man of the people. I know some are frustrated with the concept of iLock, but this will definitely make it a little simpler to understand. Let's get into the first reason that people hate iLock with the passion of a thousand burning suns. The dongle. The iLock system has a USB dongle that holds all of your software licenses. You must have this USB plugged into your computer at all times to be able to access your software. Well, that's not actually true. While that may have been the reality for a long time, it's not the case anymore iLock has had a cloud system for a long time and more and more software developers are joining this by day. What this means is that you don't actually need a physical dongle to be able to access your software. For example, you can take your copy of Billy Decker Bus Glue and send it to the cloud. All you have to do is make an iLock account. Now, if you go to another device, you can log into your iLock manager, and as long as you have an active internet connection, you can use the software as long as it's only being used on one machine at a time. Reason number two that people think that iLock's annoying. Activation limits. The thought, I don't wanna have an iLock dongle because I might forget it, or I don't wanna have a cloud because what if the internet's down and I'm in the middle of a session? This is extremely inconvenient and makes it impossible to rely on. The reality is that this depends on your activation limits. So there are three common ways to activate a license with iLock. iLock USB smart key, the iLock cloud, or your computer. And many software companies including ours, give you the option to have multiple activations. What does this mean for you? Well, let's say you have multiple computers. You can activate one license directly to your computer and then use a dongle on another. This gives you the flexibility to not have to worry about your USB key or being signed into the cloud. What's also nice about this is if you have a main rig, you can leave your dongle there and then add an activation to the cloud. That means when you travel to another studio or you're out of town, you can get to work hassle free. And you can even mix at the airport if you have some downtime between flights. Speaking of which brings us to step three downtime. My transition game really is crazy. The thought process, I might misplace my iLock. What if I have sessions coming up, but I can't get everything sorted fast enough? Let's say my plugins only accept a dongle. If I lose it, I'm completely screwed and there's nothing to be done in a reasonable amount of time. Once again, this isn't true. You're only as screwed as you want to be. If you have zero downtime, they will have you up and running almost instantly. The only drawback to zero downtime is that it's 30 bucks a year. At this point, you have to consider whether or not it's worth your sanity to pay that $30. I like to think of it as having a locksmith that's always on call. And to always be super prepared, I would suggest getting another iLock as a backup. I know, I know. It seems excessive, but don't you always keep a spare key to your car? I'll tell you who didn't used to, this guy. It cost me 220 bucks to get a new key when I lost it. On a Honda Accord, it wasn't like I was driving a Lambo or something. Anyways, to get back on track, sometimes it's better to have a backup plan than to be in trouble when a bad situation happens. On to step four, losing everything at once. The mindset, if I lose my iLock, I'll lose everything. It's scary having every software plugin I need to make a living all in one place. My argument for this, it's actually amazing to have everything in one place. If I have an iLock, it means no matter what studio I go to, I can download a plugin if they don't have it and get to work. There's truly nothing like that feeling. They've essentially taken software and found a way to turn it into hardware. And you all love hardware, right? 
thought so. Get on board. We try to make iLock experience as simple and painless as possible when it comes to our software. No dongle needed and multiple activations. So I hope I cleared up some of the worries you might have had with iLock. It really has gotten better and they're doing what they can to enhance the user experience. Are there any other things that bug you that I might be able to help with? Do you have any questions after watching this video? Make sure to leave it in the comments below and I'll catch you next time. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time and tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I'm out of here. Mic drop! <laughs> Except as engineers, you know, I would never really drop this thing because it'd get really expensive, even if it is a piece of shirt. Later.